Class D. This was something that I wanted to mention. Class D is not digital amplification, okay? So get that straight, okay? Let me say this again. A digital amp is not Class D. Class D is absolutely analog, okay? Again, to make it clear, because <laughs> I know sometimes I really have to drive the points home for people, okay? Class D is not digital, okay? Class D is an analog amplifier, 100% analog amplifier. There's just, just keep it at that. A digital amp is something completely different, okay? A digital amp does not take RCA input. It does not take an XLR input. A digital amp takes a digital signal on the input. That means it takes a Toslink, or it takes a SPDIF, or it takes an AES EBU. That's a digital amp. And the whole inside of the amplifier is all digital. It does not make analog, it does not make a sine wave until the outputs of that amplifier, once you hook it to a speaker. That's where it makes the analog sine wave is on the outputs. So nothing inside it, a digital, a digital amp is a DAC, okay? It's, 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 it is not at all a Class D. A Class D makes its analog sine wave differently and it amplifies differently using different technology, but it is not digital. The D in Class D does not stand for digital at all. It was just so happened that that was the next letter in the alphabet at the time for the amplification, so it got the letter D. It is not digital, okay? So when you see that, don't, don't confuse that. When you start calling them digital amps, you sound like you don't know what you're talking about because there's very few digital amps, and those are a completely different animal. I don't like those at all, okay? That is not my type of amplification at all because you're using it, it's a DAC, and I'd rather DAC something in a proper DAC and then send that beautiful analog signal to an amplifier that is an analog amplifier. That's the way I like to do things. To each his own, okay? So, um, again, class A, class A, B, class D are three different periods in time that they were invented. The first class Ds that came out, those were horrible, okay? They really sucked. Nowadays, the class Ds that you get are absolutely brilliant sounding. Um, Jeff Rowland is my favorite class D that is made from silicon parts. Um, he does, and what usually... What typically happens, now just so you know this too, what typically happens, Class A and Class AB, those companies make that full uh, amplifier. Usually, they're not hiring it out. Once you get to Class D, it's a completely different school of thought. It's a completely different design in order to make that amplifier. And much less people, it's a new technology, much less people are adept at making those amplifiers. So very few of the amplifier manufacturers make their own Class D from the ground up. Most of them use a module from another company. That's where you hear like um, the um, B&O ICE module uh, or Pascal modules like in the Jeff Rowland or um, the Hypex modules from Denmark, you know, Bruno Putzi. Um, you know, so those the people will use those modules and then they will do the analog input stage um, or, or the power supply because that module in many times is not a soup to nuts module. You need other things with it. Now, sometimes you can get those class D modules where they're 100 percent. Um, a turnkey. That means they have a power supply on them, they have an input section, they have the output section, and you can get a turnkey thing on a board and you just put it in a box and put some, some switch, you put the power switch on it and you put the inputs and the output binding posts and run the wires over. And there are amps that I have seen, I won't mention which ones, where I've opened them up and they have done nothing other than put someone else's amp module into their box, put their name on the front, and there's nothing proprietary about those amplifiers. All amps with a B&O ICE module are not the same, okay? You have to make an input section for that B&O ICE module. Jeff Rowland's input section just so happens to have Lundahl of Sweden uh, transformers that I showed you in the last video, He's got those on the input, even in his hundred uh, in his one twenty five amplifier, which is thirty five hundred dollars. It has the same input uh, 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 topology, or very similar than the six twenty five S two, which is eighteen thousand five hundred. So Jeff doesn't skimp out on his smaller amps. That is a very very 
um, advanced class A input stage with those uh, transformers on there coupled to the B&O ICE module makes that the very best B&O ICE module based class D amplifier that I've ever heard. I have never heard any ICE module sound better than in Jeff Roland 125 amp. Um, that is a terrific starter amp for you guys that want to start into the real hi-fi, I call it. Okay, there's so much of this stuff out there that is BS hi-fi. It's not the real hi-fi, okay? Jeff Rowland is the real hi-fi, okay? And the second you pick one of his pieces up and you hold it in your hand, instantly you know it's different than anything you've ever held. You can tell because it's milled out of a solid piece of aluminum. Even his $3,500 amp, the 125 milled out of a solid block of billet aluminum. Okay, um, so that's the difference between the A, B, and the D amps that we're talking about. Why would you want either? Why would you want Class A? You would want Class A if you have hard-to-drive speakers. You would want Class A if you're nostalgic and you like the cool, old, huge, hot amplifiers. Some people like that. There's something cool about those old amps. They still have nostalgia factor. They do sound good. Um, um, but man, don't drop them on your foot. Be careful with your arms lifting those things. Those heat sinks will gouge and cut you. Um, man, they're, they're vicious amplifiers. They will weld. If you, if you short out your, you, you, you're, you're a little bit careless and your, your spades touch at the, at the back of the, the binding post, man, those things will weld together and blow your amp up. Um, so you, that, that's class A, you know, it's just one of those things. Um, class A, B, okay, much better. Okay, now you're getting into a whole more, uh, a, a lot more of the amplifiers that are still out and about are class A, B. Why would you want class A, B? You would want class A, B if you want a little bit more texture in the mid-range. You want a little more body and you want um, maybe your DAC or something a little sharp. Your rig might be a little bit on the sharp side, um, which is 90% of rigs out there because 90% of DACs are sharp. Um, you're going to want to try a Class A, B, or an A if you like, because both of those have thicker body. The Class A is going to have even more thicker body than the than the Class A, B will. So why do you want a Class A, B? Well, maybe you want a little thicker body. You want some grunt force. You want a little bit more current than, say, a Class D, which are not necessarily known for their current capabilities. Some of the new ones are good at that, like, uh, um, but they're instantaneous current. The older ones can like the A, B and the A can can give current a long time. Like you can do a long bass drop, you know, where it's just doing a low bass thing like that. And those old amps will just put out the current and not clip, okay? The newer stuff, you can do quick bursts of current, of high current, but you can't really do the long drawn out uh, like bass low frequency draws like that because it'll just it'll tap the amp the amp will tap out um, why would you want a class D you would want a class D if you want the latest technology and the cleanest least amount of um, distortion so you might or, or something quicker um, you may want a class D if you like to try tweaks and you really want to have a revealing system that reveals all the changes that you make. A class D is going to be extremely revealing and reveal the changes that you make in the rig, probably more so than an A or an AB that has more of that body and that harmonic that can cover things, that can kind of smooth over things. Um, with a class D that is very revealing, you will hear your little tweaks and your little changes so much better. Um, and, and in some cases, so much worse, okay? So uh, the Class D can be a double-edged sword. You need to really have a good um, consultant that you can talk to that asks you about your rig before they just sell you an amplifier. Anybody that sells you an amplifier without consulting you about your rig, um, that's a red flag because not all amplifiers are the same and they aren't all good for every rig, okay? Um, they each have different little attributes that make them good for a rig. It's the same with DAX too. You can't just call and order a playback designs from me without consultation. I'm not just going to sell it to anybody that has the money. I need to talk to you first and make sure it's the right, the right DAC for you. Um, it's the same with the amps. I want to make sure it's the right amp for your rig. And I'm going to ask you, is your rig, does it lean forward? You don't, you'll know if you, if you, 
contact me, you're going to get a consultation that you don't get from other dealers. Many dealers out there are just peddlers, man. They're just selling boxes. Um, it's a business for them. They're good businessmen or they're shrewd businessmen or they're crappy businessmen, but they're businessmen. Okay. Um, I am very much an audiophile. I'm here to spread the joy and the love of, 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 of enjoying music as a meditation and as a way to calm yourself from all the crazy stuff that goes on in this world, man. I think we need reprieve from it. And so I sell hi-fi systems that relax people. And so I know how to mix the class A class. I don't really um, sell class A, nor do I really recommend it. Some of the newer amps will be biased high. Okay, a class AB, here's another thing to note. A class AB amp always starts in class A at the very beginning. The first watt, always class A, okay? Um, and then you bias that amp for however high you want to carry that class A bias. So if you hear somebody say it's an AB with a high class A bias, that means they're taking it up to maybe 15 watts, 20 watts, 30 watts of class A before it switches over to AB. Um, those amps, you get some of the, boast, the best of both worlds. Um, but um, they're, they're, it, again, it all boils down to the amp manufacturer and who's building it and how good they are at that. Um, so I, I hope this makes things a little bit, I know I covered a lot of ground here. Um, I tried to keep it simple. I think I kept it pretty simple. Class A, A, B, D are all just, it's a time when they were made. Um, they each have different uh, attributes. The fatter and old, just think of it, the older it is, the fatter it is. The, the, the newer it is, the more lean it is, and the more um, athletic and lean it is. The fatter one is the big weight lifter. That's the fat, big power lifter. The AB, he's getting, he's trimmed down and now he's probably a marathoner or something like that. And then you get the, um, the, the, the class D and that's like the yoga master. Okay. Um, so, um, and, and they have different reasons to be in your rig. So you want to, the bottom line is you want to get a good consultant, somebody that can consult with you. That's the thing that, that, that makes me shine over other dealers is I'm, in my opinion, I'm a better consultant than any other dealer out there. So um, that's that. Thanks for joining. See you.